They say that every dark cloud has a silver lining, and in the final days of this previous year, that little saying proved to be true. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you know how much I love Tariq Nasheed. If you don't know who that is, he's an internet micro-celebrity, social justice warrior, serial race baiter, and unintentional comedian whose only real claims to fame were his epic Twitter spats with the chosen one, Ben Shapiro. But midway through the year, Tariq debuted a brand new documentary he'd been working on titled Buck Breaking. Needless to say, I was intrigued. For those that don't know, the term buck breaking refers to a pseudo factual practice from the days of the American slave trade in which white plantation owners would allegedly demoralize unruly male slaves and force them to submit to their whiteness through sexual abuse and humiliation, thereby breaking the buck, to use equestrian terminology. <laughs> now, why do I say this was pseudo factual? Well, because sources say it probably never happened, and if it did, it didn't happen nearly as often as Tariq would have you believe. Man, give me a damn break. So why would he make an entire documentary about the subject and even draw comparisons to modern examples of this practice, you might ask? Three reasons. Notoriety, furthering racial division, and most of all, money! That's right, hating on white people and playing the victim are both very lucrative businesses these days. Well, at least in most cases. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man. Now, I'll give credit where credit is due and give Tariq props for criticizing the LGBTQ movement in the documentary, which he claims is feminizing black men, thereby making them weak and less able to lead in their communities. According to him, it's a new, more devious way of breaking bucks. This whole notion that masculinity is somehow toxic is nothing but an attempt to emasculate black malehood. It's clearly an agenda. If you have two eyes in your head and you're able to see, you can see that it's an agenda. Taking shots at the alphabet people is a bold move, and I applaud him for it. But other than this one instance, the rest of the film is the usual victimhood narrative designed to tug at your white liberal heartstrings in exchange for $20. And if you want further proof that all this was just one big cash grab, take a look at these. That's right, not only did Mr. Nasheed attempt to cash in on slavery through his documentary, he also released official buck-breaking NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> please, Mr. Nasheed, please, tell me more about how slavery still exists in modern America and black men are still being marginalized while you literally sell digital pictures to bidders for over a thousand dollars a pop. Look, this one even shows a basketball player as a slave. Just FYI, the average salary for an NBA player is nearly $8 million, and the median is nearly $4 million. So my question is... But I think we all know what Mr. Nasheed is talking about. When you base your entire career on sowing racial division for profit, you eventually have to start making shit up in order to keep your narrative exciting and edgy and fresh. You have to do whatever it takes to keep up the ruse. Yes. Slavery was a real thing and a terrible, terrible mistake for a number of reasons. But instead of working to fix the problems that plague their community, Mr. Nasheed and agitators like him are capitalizing on historical tragedies and horrors for personal gain. They are desecrating the memory and the legacy of their ancestors by exaggerating and even outright lying. And most importantly, they refuse to improve race relations through forgiveness and a nuanced understanding of historical complexities and would rather burn existing bridges that other, better leaders work so hard to build across the racial divide. So, Tariq, you want me to give you some friendly advice? Of course you don't. I'm white. <laughs> but I'll give you some anyway. If you really want to make a difference and improve the well-being of the black community, how about focusing your next documentary on the horrific effects of abortion and single motherhood on African Americans? How about training your lens on murder statistics, gang violence, and the prevalence of urban crime which disproportionately victimizes your people? Our young generation is clearly lost, man. Clearly lost, man. Like, like, I don't even know what to say no more, man. Like, you youngsters just going around, just busting guns, in crowds, kids getting killed, you know, and it's clearly the generation after us, man. That's so lost, man. Why not showcase the absolute failure of the war on drugs, which has led to an increase in incarcerations for young black men with no discernible decrease in actual drug use? Hell, you could even zoom in real close on George Floyd Square and ask, 
Why are we shooting and killing each other next to a monument to the importance of black lives? They wanted this bill of comprehensive police reform uh, to be... Uh, to just got to be careful here with some gunshot. Excuse us, excuse us. All these things would do so much more for your cause than selling silly tokens or rewriting history. But I know why you probably won't follow my suggestions. Because if you did, you'd have to turn that camera on yourself. And the thought of seeing the narrative you and other snake oil salesmen like you have peddled for so long, destroyed, collapsed, and otherwise blown to smithereens in 3D IMAX quality would be just too much for you to handle. Yo, kill me with this No, I think you'll probably just stick with the whole black good, white bad routine. Well, that's just fine by me. Where else will I get meme material this good, eh? I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? Money! There's also a theory that Tariq Nasheed promoted the whole buck-breaking thing to create and or expand a fetish community based around the slavery roleplay and interracial domination fantasies. I don't know how true that is, I haven't seen Tariq's Google search history, but there was a suspiciously large amount of fan art related to the buck-breaking film circulating on the internet that was, shall we say, not safe for work. So much that it inspired a Know Your Meme article, go check that out. Who knows, man. You never really know what Tariq is going to do next. Maybe this year he'll make a reboot of that 1992 space movie with himself as the main character. You know which one I'm talking about. 